Hey, Renee, this is Robert Plank from DFY Podcast, and I see that you have some questions, and I wanted to answer those questions to make a point, which is that any of these sorts of questions that you have in your local town, you're making a podcast about crime in your area, anything that one or two people ask repeatedly is worth making a video about. That way, other people who are thinking it but not asking it can benefit. I wanted to go through your questions about podcasting. Number one, where are you located? I'm located in the small town of Turlock, California, but that doesn't matter because everything is online nowadays. Everything is Zoom and home offices. And that leads us to question number two, which is, do I have a studio where you could record a podcast? And the answer is, I personally don't believe that your recording space matters that much or that you need to have a super fancy recording space right off the bat. For your very first podcast episode, I would actually record it in your car. If you have no other easy way of doing this, just take your phone, sit in your car, be sitting in the seat, put, uh, choose the, the video recording, put it in selfie mode, and speak for about five or ten minutes about... Maybe what you think about your local town and maybe if you have like a story or two about the crime that's happening in your area, but just record something. And what's what's good about uh, a couple of things about a podcast, one is that you should use video and audio, which means that we can put your video onto your YouTube channel and your podcast platforms and write all kinds of show notes, which we'll get to in a minute. but your car has excellent acoustics, right? It's a, it's a small space. It's not echoey. It's got all sorts of cushion and glass. So I would record your first episode in your car and then upgrade from there. Then maybe move to like your home office and use a web camera that's built in. And then over time, do things like add the background or add the microphone or add some additional lighting or something like that. But at first, just record it in your car and then move up to your office. But no, we don't have a studio where you can come in and record the podcast. Uh, just do it in your home office if possible. And that's where many people even show up in like news interviews and things like that from their home office. Number three, if the podcast is recorded outside of your studio, do you assist with lighting, framing, etc.? Also, the answer is no, because this is also something that will grow with you. So I have like two cameras. I have uh, three lights up here in front of me, plus a little like desk ring light. And so the best bang for your buck is to get a sort of a ring light and uh, it will make your, uh, your, your face and everything look uh, pretty good. And if you then want to level up from there, softbox lights, just go on Amazon and search softbox lights. And then if you really want to get fancy and special, get some LED lights. And the, the lighting is something to really play around with because sometimes you you worry about, well, is there like shadow on my face or am I too washed out? Like I have this light that I use sometimes for standing up, but if it's right here on me, see, it might look kind of washed out. And so it's an ongoing process. And it also doesn't matter that much. No, people are, unless your lighting's like super bad, people don't notice that much. It does not take away that much. What does take away is you not having a podcast or you not publishing regularly. So short story short, I don't assist with the lighting and it's something that you kind of play around with on your own and you will probably never be happy with your lighting because I'm never happy with my lighting. I have just one price. And so you're asking specifically about our website at dfypodcast.com slash production. So we have one single price on our site the moment we're recording it, it's three ninety seven, dollars And so we're saying that the we have one price, no matter how many podcasts produced per month, that is correct. And so we want to make this easy for you. We want to make this a flat rate for you. So we don't want you to hesitate putting out content and thinking, oh, well, I need to wait until my credits roll over or whatever. We just say, here's the monthly price. And if you wanted to give us a podcast episode every day, you could. If you want to publish a podcast monthly, you could. I would recommend if you can swing it to publish once per week and even just like a short, even like 10 minute podcast per week, I think that's doable. 
but you can do it as frequently or as infrequently as you like. So for that question number four, one price, no matter how many podcast episodes produced per month. Question number five, what is the best audio format to record in? So I prefer to record the actual raw recording in a video, in an MP4 file, uh, and you can use your iPhone. And then what I do, it's kind of doing like a picture in picture here, but at the moment I'm recording using this tool called OBS Studio and it's free and it allows me to switch between cameras and it allows me to just click the record button and it the format doesn't really matter. So if it's MP4, which is video or MP3, which is audio, our team will be pulling out the audio from it anyway. So to answer your question, the audio format does not matter, MP4 or MP3. Our website mentions that we will add the intro, outro, and sponsorship ads. Do you have to produce them or will your company produce and add them? So me and my wife are both audiobook narrators. And so if you have a script for us to read out in a male or female voice for your podcast intro or your ads, then just give them to us and that's included and we will read your ads or you're welcome to read the ads yourself and drop it in. I actually recommend that because you notice that radio DJs do this, right? They are producing a radio program and then when the ad comes on, it's still them talking. You don't even notice right away that it's an ad until like 30 seconds in because it's the same person hosting the podcast doing the ad. So I'd recommend that you do it that way. And then option number three is you could absolutely go to fiverr.com and search the word voiceover and pay sometimes five or $15 and just give them your script and then have them speak that out. Question number seven, what is an ID3 tag? That is just some technical detail that our team will be producing, creating your audio episodes in a way that is podcast friendly. And so the, the exact answer is that when you have a podcast episode and it downloads to a device, then it has things like a, a graphic on it and like the show name and the sh episode title and things like that. And that is kind of built into the audio file that's downloaded and put on a device. So it's just a technical detail, but it is something that is necessary and that our team will handle. So that way you don't have to worry about any missed opportunities when it comes to your podcast. Now, what are SEO notes? I'm glad you asked. So when you put out a podcast episode, you want to have it include some like searchable terms, right? You need it so that when someone is searching for your the keywords that you want, then someone can uh, get to the podcast episode. And so, for example, here is one of uh, a podcast I do for a client, and this is a, a video format. But do you see how we have like this twenty-one minute episode? But we also have like her bio and her uh, web addresses and her profile, and then. Uh, and like things that you'll learn from the episode. And so that's what podcast notes are. It's that it's uh, like a summary of the episode and then any links that are mentioned and then any like relevant timestamps where they talk about this on minute five and talk about this on minute seven. That's what SEO notes are. And that is a way for you to not just put out audio. This way you put, and, the, and that's a way for you to not just put out a transcript. So if someone finds your, uh, your podcast episode or your YouTube version of it, then they can jump to the certain exact points in the podcast where these things are mentioned. And it also works both ways because if someone say is looking for it, uh, like in your local town, and if you think about, if you report on like, say like a, a burglary on this street, like on Main Street in, in small town USA, and if someone is searching those phrases, then they will find your podcast episode specifically mentioning those things. Now, how does the payment work? You pay in advance and they're online recurring payments. And so you just go right here, wherever the window was, 
397 per month, you click on it, and then this pops up, and then you fill in your details, and this is where you, you check out, and then it takes us to uh, the onboarding page after checkout. And you can pay by PayPal or credit card, and then after you pay, then there's instructions about joining the Slack chat room. And so you asked, what is a Slack chat room? Well, here is what it is. It's basically just a way where you can uh, talk back and forth with our team. Okay. And so what happens is if you have a new podcast episode, you can just either on your computer or your phone, you can say, attach the, attach this new recording, this new video clip. You can uh, uh, ask when such and such episode will be live. And you can just communicate back and forth with our team just as if you're sending a message. And that seems to be the best way for us to operate. If we communicate via email, there's all these email threads. And if there's some kind of online system, even that's confusing. So with the Slack chat room, we set you up in your own channel. And then we pot, I will be in there, but we'll also add in the relevant team member. So in this case, there's our team leader, Al, who you see in the chat room, but you might also add one or two people on the team, like someone to work on your graphics or someone specifically who will be editing. Uh, and, and so this way you can just talk to whoever you need to talk to all in one place. And then if you have questions like this, like, oh, well, can you make sure to add this in the episode? You can just send those custom requests, those messages right there. And then if you have it on your phone, it will pop up uh, as well. So wonderful questions, Renee. And as you can see, a lot of it is just minor details. We want to make this easy for you. We want to make this simple for you. And uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, they're not podcasting yet because it's too difficult and there's too many technical details and minor details. So let's get all that cleared away. And this is me answering all of your very wonderful questions. And now you've got the gears turning for me because now I kind of want to record some YouTubes or some podcast episodes about these individually. And what's cool and fun about your idea here of a podcast about crime in your area is you can kind of do like a weekly recap. If something huge happens, like a fire or something, you can do an episode right on that. And then if you have like a slow week, you could consider interviewing people from your community and not necessarily like law enforcement but even like local business owners or if some crime if there's something some crime that happened like nearby like uh ask your community and get some average citizen on your show or get some small business owner on your show i think you can have a lot of fun with that so there's my answers for you let's get this podcast started let's get it rocking and rolling and because my team uh it's all we do is podcasts and we have a lot of fun with them so we want to have a lot of fun with your podcast so Let's talk soon, talk to you again, and here are the answers to your questions. Robert Plank from dfypodcast.com.